In this video, I'm going to show you five steps to create a hybrid model using Aspen AI Model Builder or AIMB, which is now available as a desktop application in V15 of the Aspen Engineering Suite. Along the way, we'll also talk about data cleaning, how to build a model, and model validation. Hi, my name is Devin Griffith, a product manager here at Aspen Technology, and I've helped many industrial practitioners to create and deploy hybrid models. These steps will help you get started in your own hybrid modeling journey. So let's get into it. Okay, so once we're in a model builder, the first step is gonna to be to create a new project. By clicking the big blue button, I'm gonna name this membrane. You can also give it a description if you would like, and I'm gonna click create project. So now we need to import some data. We give you plant data templates uh, and a simulation data template. You can also uh, directly import data from Aspen Multicase, which is a great way to generate lots of good data from Aspen Plus or HISIS. In this case, we'll just be using a simulated plant data set. If you use our template, then everything should be mapped automatically. Uh, you can look and verify that things like units of measure, uh, tag names, and the variable values have been mapped correctly, and then Go ahead and click next. On the next page, we're going to verify our units of measure and chemical components. And that's gonna pay off later when we're creating a unit operation block to use in Aspen Plus. The first thing I'm gonna do is copy over my uh, descriptions from the data historian to the model variable names. I'm looking and I'm seeing that all of my units of measure were mapped correctly, uh, except pressure drop came with a, a string that is bar, which means I do need to change that one to be delta pressure. When we're reading unit of measure strings from a historian, there's a few things like that that you'll have to uh, verify. Next, we're going to configure all of the chemical components using the configure components wizard. So what I'm gonna do is for each of our four chemical components in the feed permeate retentate streams, I have to map them to the correct uh, Aspen Plus component. This is gonna be easy for us here because we have uh, the chemical species names in the model variable names from the description. So I can just search for CO2 going to use the component CO2. I actually don't want uh, to assign that to CO2 recovery because that's not a stream variable, but I'm going to assign that to the other three streams. Now I'm going to uh, repeat that process for the other three chemical components. Once that's done, I can hit save. Now all of my chemical components are correctly mapped variables. Uh, after that, I'm going to go ahead and click next. So on the claim page in AIMB, you have the ability to create and manage multiple clean data sets. Uh, this is very useful because you can try different cleaning techniques and see how that impacts the results of your model. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward with data set one, uh, but I can also make another copy of the data set that I uploaded by again, clicking the big blue plus button. And now I also have data set two. By default, they're copies of the uh, imported data set, but now I can apply different cleaning techniques to both of them. So I'm gonna select one and go next. So this is probably my favorite page in AIMB because it has so many visuals and so many useful tools. The first thing I like to do once I come to this page is just take a quick look at all of my variables and the data to get a feel for how it looks. And as I'm scrolling through this convenient little tiled view, there's usually some things that might stick out. <clears throat> You might notice some outliers or some time periods when the equipment was down. You can quickly identify that and then decide what you want to do about it. We also have some other visualization methods here like uh, bar charts that show you distributions, uh, box and whisker plots. 
we have this correlation chart here that shows you uh, the Pearson correlation coefficients in a heat map. You can also see scatter plots of each variable pair. And on the correlation plot, you can click on any square to see uh, that pair. So here I see a strong positive correlation between feed stream temperature and permeate stream temperature. So I'm gonna click on that square. And yes, they're very tightly correlated. In the statistics tab, I can see things like minimum, maximum, average, standard deviation. And I can also see uh, all of my data in a tabular format on the data tab. Once I've visualized my data and I have a good feeling for what's going on, I can move on to applying some cleaning steps. So the most common two uh, that I use are bad slicing and check limit. So bad slicing means I'm going to cut out specific periods of time. And one of the first things you're going to want to do is identify any time periods when the equipment was down uh, or in a transition or in turnaround, anything outside of the behavior that you're trying to model, right? And you can cut that data out. Next most common is check limit. Uh, I can manually choose upper and lower bounds for all of my data points and throw away data points beyond that. Uh, we can also click this apply upper lower fence button and that's going to do a, a simplistic you know, univariate analysis uh, to de uh, define outliers for each variable. So that's a good starting point so you don't have to type in all those numbers yourself but you can still um, modify them now. Once I've chosen um, all of the data cleaning methods that I want to use, I just turn them on. Now I'm going to click run. So now I can see uh, all the points that were removed by my choice of data cleaning. We also have some other data cleaning methods such as check frozen, uh, averaging, override, steady state detection, outlier detection. Uh, but the most common two that I use pretty much in every project or bad splicing and check limit. So now if we go back to the table of clean data sets, I can see that I have uh, data set one that I applied bad slicing and check limits to. And so I've removed a bunch of points and now it only has 333 points <clears throat> in comparison to data set two, which is just a copy of the data set I uploaded that still has 500 points. So now that I have these two data sets, uh, I can move forward with both of these two data sets, create a model for each one and compare results. So now we're going to uh, go ahead and move on to the build step. So again, here I can create and manage uh, multiple model configurations. So for configuration two, I can use data set two and uh, we can move forward and see what happens. Uh, so next thing I need to do is to find my independent and dependent variables. In this case, the pressure drop and everything associated to the feed will be independent. Uh, everything associated to the permeate and retentate streams and the CO2 recovery will be deep, uh, dependent. So I'm going to click update. Go on to the next step. So in this example, I want to create a model for Aspen Plus and I want to apply a mass balance. So what I can do now, um, since I've already mapped all my components, is I'm just going to drag and drop everything associated to the feed stream to the left. And I'm going to drag and drop permeate uh, and retentate streams to the product side. And now I can check and see that uh, the chemical components are mapped to each stream. Uh, I can check that the mass fractions sum to one. Next, we're going to choose our machine learning uh, options. So in AI Model Builder, we have plain linear regression, lasso CV, uh, and a constrained neural network. For lasso, you have different transformation options. And for neural networks, uh, you have different 
uh, activation function uh, options and number of nodes and number of layers. For now, we're just going to use lasso and I'm going to go ahead and make the model. Okay, once it's done, I get a notification and I can go to the analyze page. So here I can check the accuracy results of my model. So for every dependent variable, uh, I'm going to see training uh, accuracy and testing accuracy, uh, including R squareds and root mean squared error. I can also look at parity plots to see predicted versus observed for every variable uh, for both the training and testing sets. Since this is a lasso model, I can also look at uh, the scaled coefficients that were chosen uh, by the lasso algorithm. And I can also see a heat map of variable importance. Another thing I can do is on the custom plots page, I'm going to add a plot of uh, observed versus predicted uh, CO2 recovery. So on the custom plots page, you can also make uh, observed versus predicted plots for every dependent variable. That's another uh, very convenient way to visualize results. For this model, our accuracy results are very, very good. So we're going to move on to deploy. This is the model I just created with very good accuracy. So now I can choose this one and download it. I can bring this into Aspen Plus through the Customize ribbon, Manage Hybrid Models, and here I can uh, upload that file. That now appears in the Hybrid Models tab uh, of the model palette. And that's exactly what I've deployed in this flow sheet. So I have my membrane model that I've created from data, and I can map uh, streams now to this model. Uh, and connect with stream ports. So now I get uh, a full set of results in Aspen Plus for all of these streams that I can use in the flow sheet uh, just like I would any other stream or unit operation blog. And there you have it. Use these steps to create accurate and robust hybrid models with AIMB. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more examples of hybrid models, then check out the example library in AIMB. Thanks and we'll see you in the next one.